So again, as kind of a summary here, this doesn't have anything electronegative around it, so it's pretty far to the right. Now, this is attached to a carbon with something electronegative, so it's still to the right of 2.5, but it's further to the left than before. Now, this is a hydrogen that's actually on a carbon with an electronegative atom, so it's actually to the left of 2.5. And then if there's more than one electronegative atom, we'll be closer to five, or maybe even eventually to the left of five. There was three. This is really the same stuff I had on the board. Maybe it's just more clearly written. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I was going to say he actually like, sent out a practice exam. S say what's that? He actually sent out a practice exam. Oh, good. Exams. That would be helpful. Great. So, uh, yeah, we might look at some examples from that. Good. And then remember, if you have an alkene hydrogen, it would be in this region. This region starts at around 4.5. It would be nice and symmetrical if it just started at 5, but actually a lot of alkene hydrogens are between 4.5 and 5. Okay. So if you have an alkene hydrogen, an alkene hydrogen might have an absorption in this region, between 4.5 and 5. And then again, the more electronegative elements there are, and the closer they are to the alkene, the further to the left we would get dragged. But if there's no electronegative elements around, it would start between 4.5 and 5. So this is like the alkene region. And there's many other types of absorptions that you might have to memorize. For example, there are alkyne absorptions. You just have to look that up. There's the aldehyde absorption for an aldehyde hydrogen. I believe that's usually between 10 and 12. There's OH absorptions and NH absorptions, so we're not going to go through every single one. You can look those up in a table and memorize the ones that seem to be important, but these were the general rules of thumb. Mm -hmm. 